The point of view. Good readers understand who is telling a story. This is called the point of view. Knowing the point of view helps to deepen our understanding of the characters in the plot. Sometimes stories can be told from the first person's viewpoint. This is where the narrator is usually a character in the story. I am a big fan of slime. I eat a bowl of it for my breakfast every day. The first person viewpoint uses words like I, my, me or mine. Sometimes stories can be told from the third person's viewpoint. This is where the narrator is not a character in the story. One day he discovered the slime was all gone. What a disaster! His breakfast was ruined. The third person's viewpoint uses words like her, she, he, him, or his. Let's answer a question about part of a story called Kalo Lee's New Country. My name is Kalo Lee. I was born in Hong Kong. I lived in Hong Kong until I was eight. My brother and I lived with my aunt. In Hong Kong, it is normal for children to live with other family members. We lived with my aunt so that my parents could work hard. Lots of Hong Kong families help each other like this. My aunt has a daughter who is older than me. They're a wonderful family. Who is telling the story? Kalo Lee's aunt. Kalo Lee's brother. Kalo Lee. Kalo Lee's mom. Let's have a look for some clues in the text. These words tell us that this is written in the first person. So Kalo Lee is telling the story. Let's read some more of the story. It is very expensive to live in Hong Kong. People have to work very hard. My dad worked as a chef in a restaurant. My mom worked in the same restaurant. We only saw them on weekends. I went to a Chinese school in Hong Kong. Chinese schools are very strict. Homework has to be done on time, or you have to stay after school. What is Kalo Lee's point of view on Chinese schools? They are fun places to learn. The students don't have to work hard. They teach lots of different subjects. They have rules that must not be broken. Let's have a look for some more clues in the text. This is Kalo Lee's point of view. She says that Chinese schools are very strict, and explains that if you don't do your homework on time, you have to stay after school. So the correct answer must be this one. They have rules that must not be broken. It means Kalo Lee thinks Chinese schools are strict. Understanding whose point of view a story is told in helps to deepen our understanding of the characters and plot. Cover story. Reading Express Dictionary. You will need to study three of these words. Choose a word to study. Find the word in the dictionary. Choose the correct word. Strict. Not giving in. Stern. Put these words into alphabetical order. What part of speech is the word? Drag it into the correct box. Which sentence uses the word correctly? Choose another word to study. Find the word in the dictionary. Choose the correct word. 
normal, everyday, or usual. Put these words into alphabetical order. What part of speech is the word? Drag it into the correct box. Which sentence uses the word correctly? Choose another word to study. Find the word in the dictionary. Choose the correct word. Expensive. Put these words into alphabetical order. What part of speech is the word? Drag it into the correct box. Which sentence uses the word correctly? Drawing conclusions. When you draw conclusions, you make decisions about what the text is telling you. Read the passage and answer the questions. Label the picture. Drag each label to the correct part of the picture. Click OK when you are done. Point of view. Point of view deals with different ways of seeing a subject. In a non-fiction text, it is how the author shows their opinion, or in a fictional story, how each character expresses their opinions and views about a subject.
feelings. Chapter 3. Nelson's Volcano Is there a problem, Nelson? asked Miss Horsewood. No, said Nelson casually. Then why aren't you working on your poem? Because my feelings don't take orders, explained Nelson. They don't like poetry. Do your feelings like detention? asked Miss Horsewood. Nelson picked up his pencil and stared at his blank piece of paper. One by one, each student finished writing, folded their poem, and put it in the box on Miss Horsewood's desk. Then it was time to read them out loud. Ruby read a poem about feeling bored. Miles read a poem about feeling giggly. Ming read a poem about feeling tired. Leon read a poem about feeling yellow. Bruno read a poem about feeling nervous. Nelson, can you read the poem you have? asked Miss Horsewood. Nelson shuffled to the front of the class. He tried not to look excited by the poem he had picked from the box. This poem is about feeling alone, Nelson began. Alone looks like space. It smells like yesterday. It feels quiet and peaceful. I feel like I am floating and free. Bravo, cried Miss Horsewood, clapping and making her underarms wobble. Holly smiled proudly. Nelson laughed and looked at her as he sat down. Holly looked fiercely at Nelson. Holly, can you read your poem, please? asked Miss Horsewood. Nelson noticed that Holly had been smiling right up until she unfolded the poem she had picked. No, replied Holly flatly. I got a poem about nothing. Nothing can be a feeling, said Nelson. Maybe you just don't have feelings, said Holly. Yes, I do, said Nelson, feeling hurt. I have loads. Doesn't look like it, said Holly. I've got a piece of paper that I know is yours. It has nothing, not a zip, zero, zilch on it. No words and no feeling. Nelson looked like a volcano of feelings about to explode. Nothing is a feeling that has no words, he yelled. Rahib, please read your poem, suggested Miss Horsewood. No, cried Nelson. I have thousands of feelings. I'll prove it. What about... That's enough, Nelson, said Miss Horsewood. But Nelson's feelings didn't take orders. Nelson's volcano began to erupt. His feelings... Ex I feel angry, squashed, crowded, not listened to, bullied, loud, bored, jumpy, yellow, tricky, hot. Jolly, confused, powerful, loved, annoyed, frustrated, lost, busy, ticklish, weepy, spacey, scared, muddled, late, odd, big, lazy, bossy, crazy, sunny, wiggly, purple, brave, bored, jealous, silly, messy, hungry, tired, blue, content, wonderful, geekly, squirmy and wiggly, miffed, free, sneezy, trapped, like jelly, Full, floaty, sneaky, forgetful, frantic, green, sick, sad, mad, joyful, boastful, wild, filled with glee, overwhelmed with me. Nelson took a deep breath. I feel nothing. I feel everything. Why didn't Nelson start work on his poem? Why couldn't Holly read Nelson's poem? I feel nothing. I feel everything. This shows Nelson has... How did Nelson react when Holly said he had no feelings? What do the words nada, zip, zero, zilch mean? Uh...
What type of words Nelson used to describe his feelings?